In this video, I will show you how you can solve a system of two homogeneous first order linear differential equations and how you can draw them in a phase diagram. In particular, I will show you the general form of such a system. Then I will give you an example. I will solve that example and I will show you how to draw the same example in a phase diagram. Okay, let's start with the general form. The general form of a system of homogeneous first order linear differential equations is given by x prime t is equal to some matrix A times x of t. x prime t and x t are vectors and A is a matrix. In the two equation system, these are two by one vectors and a two by two matrix. The solution for this differential equation is simply x t, which is equal to x1 t, x2 t, in the most general case with real and distinct eigenvalues and hence eigenvectors is simply some constant 1 times the first eigenvector of matrix A e to the power of lambda 1 t where lambda 1 is the first eigenvalue of this matrix plus c2 b2 e to the lambda 2 t so it's simply a constant times the first eigenvector times e to the power of the eigenvalue times t plus the second constant times the second eigenvector times e to the power of the second eigenvalue times t. These two constants are arbitrary, but if you have two initial conditions like x1 t, x0 t, and x2 0 t are equal to some number, then you can solve for the explicit solution of this system. Okay, now we have this formula, let's take a nice example. In particular, let's assume x1 prime t write that nicer, is equal to 2x1t plus 5x2t and x2 prime t is equal to x1t plus 6x2t. Right, right. Okay, so we have this system here. The associated matrix with that system, matrix A, is equal to 2, 5, 1, 6. And we need to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix. To find the eigenvalues, let's write down the characteristic polynomial, which is 2 minus lambda times 6 minus lambda minus 5 equals 0 which is lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 2 times 6 is 12 minus 5 is 7 equals 0 from which we immediately get lambda 1 equals 1 and lambda 2 equals 7. Okay, now let's get the eigenvectors. Remember that if we have the characteristic form which is, let me rewrite that here, instead of A, it's A minus the identity matrix times lambda, I for each vector, right? We can write that as minus lambda I minus lambda I. And we know that this expression times the ith eigenvector has to be equal to zero, okay? And so we can find eigenvector 1 The first eigenvalue is 1, so we get 1, 5, 1, 5 So simply multiplying the, eigen, the eigenvector 5 minus 1 will give us 0, 0 And we have our first eigenvector And for the second one We subtract 7, we get minus 5, 5 And 1, minus 1 so our vector is simply 1, 1. 
and we're almost done. Now all we need to do is we need to plug this into this equation here and we found our solution. So let's do that. Z1, because we don't know the constant, we don't have an initial condition yet, Z1 times the first eigenvector, which is 5 minus 2, times e to the t, because the eigenvalue is 1, plus c2 times the eigenvector times e to the 7t, because our second eigenvalue is 7. Okay, now that we've solved the system, let's draw the system in a phase diagram. So let me erase all the stuff we don't need anymore. Because for the phase diagram, all we need are the initial equations and some small transformation of that. So we need these initial equations, and we want to draw them into a so-called phase diagram, where we put x2, t on the vertical axis, and x1, t on the horizontal axis. Now, in this diagram, to draw it neatly, we said x1 prime t and x2 prime t equal to zero, so where there's no movement in the x direction, so in the horizontal direction, and where there's no movement in the vertical direction. And we solve, since x2 t is on the vertical axis, for x2 t. From the first equation, we get x2 t is equal to minus 2 over 5 x1 t, and the second one is x2 t is equal to minus 1 over 6 x1 t, which are our two equations for the lines, so let me draw them. They will not be to scale, but I know that 1 over 6, minus 1 over 6, is a line which is relatively flat, and minus 3 over 5, sorry, 2 over 5, is relatively steep to this one. So I will draw one relatively flat line and one relatively steep one. The flat one being where x2 prime t equals 0, and the steeper one being where x1 prime t equals 0. Okay? Now we've drawn these lines. They all go through the zero point. The reason being, if I plug in zero for both values here, I get a zero here, and the same underneath it. So I can start thinking about, okay, what are the dynamics of this system? Let's start with x1 t. I want to know if I'm to the right or the left, or that is above or below, this line, where is x1 moving? Is x1 moving to the right or to the left? So, let's look back at this equation. We assume this equation is equal to zero. And now let's just increase x2. So we move vertically up. If we move vertically up, this expression was equal to zero. Now we increase x2. That means x prime of 1t will be positive. So that means it will move to the right. Conversely, if x2t shrinks, it will move to the left. And note that I got, I put down four arrows for each of the four segments divided by these two lines. Okay, now the second equation, I want to know where x2t moves. If x2t increases or falls above or below the x2t line. Okay, so let's look at the x2t equation. We assume it's equal to zero. And now we go horizontally. We again take the other variable. We go to the right, which means we increase x1t. So if we go to the right here, we increase x1t, that means, because there's a positive sign, we increase x2 prime t. So that means we move up. Similarly, if over here we go above the length, we move up. 
Then we move down below, or to the left of that lane. And now we have distinguished the dynamics. You can also add arrows on these lines. In particular, if you're on the x2 line, you're still to the right of the x1 prime t equals 0 line. So you're moving to the right. And similarly, if you're up here, you're still above the x2 prime t equals 0 line. So move up. And we can see from the system, whichever point you're at, you're going away from the central point where there's no movement in the x one direction and no movement in the x2 direction. So this is an explosive system, which you can also have found if you looked at the two eigenvalues, which were positive. So x1 was 1, and sorry, lambda 1 was 1, and lambda 2 was 7, which are both greater than 0, so the system is exploding. Thank you for watching.